Hey DJ Tech Tools, it's Chris Brackley in the lab and today I've got three audio interfaces that we're looking at, all on the budget end of things, around about the $100 mark. And you know, on the surface, they all kind of do quite a similar thing. They hook up to your computer and they let you have two separate stereo outputs. So that will be a Q and a master signal or two just distinct deck outputs and you can run those into an external mixer and use that for your EQing and blending and so on. So yeah, on that level, they're quite similar, but there are quite some significant differences between these three. You've got the Reloop Play, we've got the Tractor Audio 2 Mark II and the Griffin DJ Connect, which is the newest one of the three. And that's what sort of led us to do this roundup review of these three and just see what's out there around about that $100 mark. So what I'm gonna do, talk about each one individually, and then we'll come back and bring them all together at the end and sort of draw some conclusions from there. So first up, we've got the Reloop Play. Now this is, on the face of it, really the most basic of these devices. You've got um, simple two channel output on stereo RCA phono connectors on a line level. You've got level knobs for both channels. You've got a headphone jack on the top, on the, on the back of it, and you can switch between output one and two and headphone and master. So that will route the second channel either to this headphone socket or to the second set of RCA connectors on the front. You've got a mini USB connection and that is it. And that's not a bad thing, I have to say. This thing, just you need a driver, whether you're on Windows or Mac, it's not core audio compliant. So you do need a driver. And I, I got confused by that at first because I plugged it in and it made a hell of a noise. And then I realized I did have to get that driver. So I've got that installed on the Mac. And yeah, the sound is very, very good. It's loud, it's punchy, um, plenty of headphone volume. My ears are still ringing from the other day almost when I really tried out the headphone volume on this thing. It goes super loud, which is what you want if you're gonna be using this in like a club environment. You want to be able to plug in to that external mixer and get plenty of level without pushing it because so often you get to a gig and the DJ before you has already maxed out the levels or there's you know the sound engineer has just basically set it so you have to run everything at maximum to just get any sound at all it does happen and this thing has got enough welly enough grunt to get you through I do like the fact that it is RCA phono connectors now there's you know you could argue that perhaps the others are equally convenient but I think having RCA phonos is probably the most convenient in a professional kind of DJ environment because wherever you go, there will always be a CDJ with an RCA phono connector or something else in the booth that's got those regular phono cables. So if one of yours goes down, if you haven't got a spare with you, you're gonna have a much greater chance of finding a regular RCA to RCA cable in a booth than you are you know, one of the mini jack two twin phonos or something that you might need with the other two devices. So overall, it comes in about $130 um, street price. So it's not the cheapest out of the three. In fact, it's the most expensive. But in terms of if you just want something that's simple for using with a computer, um, it doesn't work with iOS at all. I did try it with the camera connection kit, but it draws too much power. So it is just for your computer. It's PC and Mac compatible so that's a bonus as well it does work with windows as well so overall yeah this is your simple two stereo out sound card flexible and does the job next up is the griffin dj connect now this is the new one on the market this is the one that sort of led me to do this little roundup of three different cards and compare and contrast um, it's nicely made, it's all plastic again, but it is got a nice rubberized base with the algorithm logo. It's obviously designed in tandem with the guys at DJ. Um, it's got RCA phono connectors for your main output, which I've gone over with the Reloop, but I do like that. You've got a mini USB again. You've got a mini jack for your headphones on the front, and it's got this big notched metal wheel for your headphone level control. And I really like that. There's something very tactile about it something very just nice to get your hands on and play with it i couldn't think what it reminded me of and then i realized it reminds me of the old griffin power mate um, from way back years ago which i had which goes worked with your mac and just did volume control and stuff on your mac probably still got that lurking around somewhere in the studio it, it that was a great bit of kit and this feels equally sort of fun it does light up this sort of orange glow when it's all connected and working underneath and the good thing with this it's compatible with all the versions of iOS that I threw at it. So 7.0.6, which is what I've got on my iPad um, because I've got it jailbroken for screen recording, blah, blah, blah. But you know, the older versions of iOS 7, this works absolutely fine with. It worked great with the OS X as well. And it does come with, not only you've got the regular 30 pin iOS connector, 
you've got a regular USB connector to go to your Mac computer, and also you've got a lightning connector as well, which is quite a big deal considering that the Audio 2, which I'm gonna to get to now, does not come with that. So this one's got you all covered. As long as you're in that kind of Apple ecosystem, then the DJ Connect is gonna be a, you know, a solid performer for you. Not quite as loud as the Reloop or the um, Audio 2. It's, it's only ever bus powered and it won't power your iPad when it's in use. That's the only other thing with this. It won't, because there is no external power supply for this, you put, your, put this into your phone or your iPad and they, you'll be running on their battery. It doesn't tend to hammer the battery much more than just using it as it is, but you've got to bear that in mind. If you're going to do a set with this somewhere, you are going to need to make sure you've got plenty of power before you begin. But otherwise, yeah, nice, fun bit of kit. Last up on the table, we have the Tractor Audio 2 Mark II. Now, this is a smaller, more refined version of their older Tractor Audio 2, which is already pretty compact, but this thing is absolutely tiny totally would fit in your pocket um, it's all plastic construction but it's built in much the same way as all the other um, tractor audio interfaces this kind of layered construction it's a lovely bit of hardware really really is sound quality is fantastic volume wise it's fantastic as well you plug it into your computer be that os 10 or on windows as well and it just works lovely loud output really punchy fantastic it's only got the um, mini jack connectors for your headphones and your master output but you know that's not something i can't live with you know it's just a, a little inconvenience compared to rca phono connectors and in some cases it might be more convenient so you know swings and roundabouts i'm not going to debate that um, you have got a mic again a mini usb port and you've got a power supply connector as well which is for your optional tractor power supply now this is where the problems sort of begin with this this thing has driven me up the wall this week it really really has because i love the hardware i love the sound um but there are some issues with this and ios i mean in general tractor products and ios there are some issues still now and here we are at you know august 2014 um tractor dj hooking this up to tractor dj on my iPad and I've still got that on iOS 7.0.6 for screen recording it's jailbroken I have to leave it on that version and this thing just crackles away the whole time um, absolutely unusable basically and I'm sorry but you can't blame that on Apple because the DJ Connect works perfectly well with that exact same setup indeed with Tractor DJ on my iPad the DJ Connect works and the, uh, the Audio 2 Mark II does not work on that iPad, so that is a problem. It does work fine with iOS 7.1, you know, with the more recent versions of iOS. So I hooked that up to my iPhone 5S, which has got that version on there. But here's the next problem. We have two cables in the box with this Audio 2 Mark II. We've got a, um, a nice, you know, regular USB connector, and you've got, wait for it, a 30 pin iOS connector. Now, Again, it's August 2014, you know, I'm sure there are millions upon millions of iOS devices out there with 30 pin connectors, but you know, all of the more recent ones don't have it. And I just think in 2014, it's time to either ship this with both a 30 pin and a lightning connector, or just a lightning connector and make the 30 pin one optional. If the cost is an issue there, then they should just make the 30 pin one the optional one and ship it with a lightning one because they don't even do a lightning one. Um, I just checked this morning and they, they still don't do a lightning connector. Um, so that was very frustrating. So I did get that to work though um, with my iPhone 5S and the lightning, I've got an official Apple lightning adapter. So that's an extra cost you're gonna have to incur if you wanna buy this thing. And unfortunately that doesn't work without the power supply, which doesn't come with it. So you are gonna have to lay out another $30 for the power supply. So it's just, the iOS experience overall is pretty frustrating with this. When it works, it works fantastically, but you are gonna need, and again, it's loud output, it's great sound and all that, but you're going to need those extra accessories if you've got a modern iPad or a modern um, iPhone that you wanna run with this, then you are gonna need the official Apple Connect um, Lightning adapter, which is like 20 bucks, and you are gonna need the Native Instruments power supply, which is 30 bucks. So we're talking about then, going from $100 to $150 to make this thing really usable with recent iOS. So that is a problem. And it's just a shame because as I say, otherwise I love this thing. I love the size of it, I love the sound, um, I love the volume output. It's flexible, you know, you can route 
um, for external mixing, you can do internal mixing, you've got controls on the side for your headphone controls and your cue panning as well on track to DJ. All of that is just fantastic and I love this bit of hardware, but unfortunately native instruments just don't seem to be able to get iOS right. And I'm hoping, you know, as, as we move forward to 2015, they do finally get that nailed down because this thing has got so much potential um, but unless you're willing to spend that extra, you know, that extra bit of money to really get this thing working properly with iOS, it's going to be a disappointment. So to wrap up then, we've got three very different takes on a simple two stereo channel um, sound card here, audio interface. There you've got the Reloop Play, which I really like. It's very simple. RCA phono connectors, I like that. It just works very nicely. As long as you've got the driver installed, it'll work just perfectly with your Mac or PC. Little volume controls, simple, dependable. Sounds good, sounds loud, I like that. The DJ Connect is, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, bearing in mind this is an Apple only product really, you can't use it with your Windows computer. It's again, very simple. I like the big volume control on there. I like the fact it's got RCA phono connectors for the output, but it's downfall is that it doesn't have that volume, that output punch of the other two because there's no way to, you know, mains power it and it just isn't as loud. Um, you know, the Reloop doesn't have mains power either and that is much louder than the Griffin. So, it, you know, there's obviously something internally that's, that's the difference there. So just got to look at your needs. If you need iOS, go for the Griffin. If you need just the computer, go for the Reloop. The Audio 2 is, as I say, very frustrating. I love the hardware. I love how well it works with OS X and with Windows. It's a great bit of hardware, great, great bit of kit. There are some big issues with iOS and that applies across the board with native instrument stuff. So if you're gonna buy one of these with a view to using it with iOS, you've gotta either have quite an old iDevice or you're gonna to have to kind of cross your fingers and hope that native instruments actually sort out their iOS offerings because at the moment it's not quite there. But if you want something for your computer that's super loud, super compact, it's gonna just sit very nicely in any TJ booth and work integrate into any sound system very nicely, then the Audio 2 is a great bit of kit. But just keep an eye on that iOS side, that's all I'm gonna say. So do check out the written review over at djtechtools.com where I've got a bit more to talk about on each of these and thank you for watching.